everyone welcome back to nobody Karen's I'm Karen as you know and I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in today and for uh, the past videos that I've done uh, this has definitely been a real treat for me I love doing them and I really think that it's helping myself and it could be helping others as well in my last video I talked a lot about depression um, and the help that I got which I'm very thankful that I got um, a lot of things that I was struggling with during that time was sleep and I slept a lot because I was depressed but it wasn't sleep that makes you feel energized um, I had low B12 um, which ended up me getting B12 shots for eight weeks I had no energy I just I had no get up and go. Um, I just wanted to sleep all the time and go to group and eat. That's all I did really. Well, and I didn't even eat that much um, because I was losing weight. So a lot of the times, um, you know, I would get up, I would go to group um, and then come home and just go right back to sleep. Um, I mentioned that I switched from uh, day group to night group and I felt like a lot of people were getting better. Um, their situations, they were, you know, learning how to handle their situations better and things were just, you know, getting to a point to where they were more comfortable with life. And for me, I felt like I was going backwards. I felt like things weren't getting better for me and that they weren't progressing. And a lot of that had to do with all the doctors that I had. Um, you know, most people have maybe a primary care physician and then maybe a specialist that they see for whatever reason. I had a primary care doctor, a urologist, an endocrinologist, a therapist, and then a clinical doctor that I saw at my uh, therapy facility to do my medicine management for my anxiety and my antidepressants. That's five doctors and that's a lot to have to relay back and forth. I felt like I was working because I had to make sure that this doctor knew um, everything that the other doctor had said and it was a really hard communication. It, it stressed me out. It, I mean, there's no other word for it. It, it just really seriously stressed me out. Um, and I felt like I was getting duplicate care. For example, I had to start taking iron pills because um, I was iron deficient, um, I had anemia, and um, I needed to drink it with orange juice, just a little bit. Um, so I would take my iron pills every morning with my little bit of orange juice. And at that time, I was writing down, I was logging what I was eating and my insulin usage um, for my endocrinologist. And they told me that I needed to not drink juice. And I was like, well, I need to drink juice because I take iron pills. So it was just, you know, people contradicting other doctors and it was just really stressful and it was hard to maintain. And I, I struggled with that a lot. It was, it was hard. Um, I uh, also were, was having lots of infections. Um, my kidney stone, and I, I know it's, I say stone as in one, but it was basically a cluster of 10 stones in my right kidney. Um, but I say stone because it was like one huge big boulder. Um, the doctor had told me that it's basically harboring infection. I mean, it just was basic infection. And throughout this whole time, I'm having issues with night sweats, um, chills, fever. I mean, at one point it took three weeks just to get antibiotics from one of the doctors because I was having so many issues with my infections. Um, at one point um, I was having issues yawning, breathing, and um, pain down my right leg and I didn't understand why. And so I talked to one of the doctors that I see um, at the uh, my group therapy uh, place and she said you know you should really make an appointment to see your doctor about it so I made an appointment and I went in 
on, I think it was a Friday. And um, I went in and I and my heart rate was up, my blood pressure was low, and I was running a little bit of a fever. And the uh, physician's assistant at my primary care physician's office was very concerned. So the first thing she did was say, you need to go to the ER. Um, I'll call over there, I'll let them know you're coming, but you, you know, we're afraid that you're gonna have sepsis. Um, so I went over there and you know they did blood work and a urine sample and everything and they basically was like you know you have a kidney infection which I kind of knew already because I was having so many issues with kidney infections um, so they sent me home with antibiotics um, on my way home and this is where the duplicate care comes into on my way home I get a call from my urologist who I had just seen and did a urine sample with. And they said, Karen, you have a kidney infection. And I said, I know, I was just at the ER. Um, they gave me such and such medicine and um, I'm on my way home right now. And they said, don't take that medicine. We're calling in a different medicine for you. Um, take that. And I was like, okay. And while I was at the ER, I forgot to say, I had a CT scan done. Uh, to make sure that basically everything you know was going okay with my kidneys that they didn't get any worse and I already had a CT scan scheduled for my urologist so it kind of worked out about three weeks after that I actually ended up switching my care at my therapy facility um, they did notice that I was still in a rut, I still was very depressed and still had the suicidal thoughts and you know, no, there was no action or intent to do anything to harm myself, but sometimes those thoughts still just stir around in your brain. And um, my therapist noticed it, the doctor that I see there noticed it, and they decided to up my care to where I, instead of going three days a week, would go five days a week. And I'm very thankful for that, and I, I'm really happy that that is what was done because I knew I was having issues. And like I said, I felt like everyone around me was getting better, and I just wasn't. I was still in this horrible rut and I just felt like things were not going the way they needed to. There was no light at the end of the tunnel and it, I never thought I was going to see a light at the end of the tunnel. So um, I was thankful to go five days a week and you know you learn while you're there you learn about coping skills, you learn about um, just different ways to love yourself and care for yourself and have compassion and you know learn that yourself about yourself worth and you know it just really takes time to to get to know yourself in a, at a better in a better way and um and i and i love that about this facility that i went to you know they had some really good counselors and therapists that really could you know show you you know things that you could do to keep your mind off of the negative thoughts and how to um, kind of challenge those negative thoughts. When you are a diabetic, you get your sugar checked every three months. It's called your A1C, so it's like your average count for a three month span. And most of the time when you're diabetic, you need to be under six. Uh, six is like the magic number, so you, you should be below six. Uh, my urologist told me that, that you know my numbers need to get better and if need be he could do my surgery you know at an eight. Uh, when I first started my journey my A1C was 11.9 which is very very high and it's very unhealthy um, and that was a big issue. Uh, my endocrinologist I felt like wasn't really on the ball with things and I saw his PA a lot and I just felt like the way she approached me with certain things like nutrition and getting my numbers together I just didn't feel like she was you know a right fit for me so 
um, my primary care physician and the PA at that place also uh, was helping me monitor my sugar and they went ahead and did my A1C for me and I found out that um, and this was in May that my A1C went down to an 8.3 I was so happy I could have cried I may have even cried I was just so happy to hear that and so what my primary care physician and his physician's assistant did was write a letter to my urologist to let him know hey you know this is her number she's been trying so hard and she's been doing insulin and you know we really see a big change and you know what can we do to hurry this along and um, I made my appointment with my endocrine because I did need to get the okay with him and I believe it was May 16th I went in and he gave me the okay for surgery and that was on a Monday and I was so happy and I just couldn't wait to call my urologist and get this the surgery finally scheduled I, I mean the emotions I had were just so relieved you know I was relieved I was just so happy I was ready I was just like oh my gosh finally so um, that was on a Monday and I was at like an all-time like I was up here by Friday my urologist calls me and this was three weeks after I had my CT scan at, um, at a, a hospital that I was sent to the ER for uh, so that Friday I get a call from my urologist and he says Karen there's an abscess on the muscle behind your kidney and there is no way we can do surgery until that abscess is taken care of. And my heart just broke. I, I just, you know, I was on such a, a high, like I said, I was up here because I got the okay from my endocrinologist that I was gonna be able to have this surgery. And I now am dropping, you know, down lower as he's telling me this. And Mind you, I haven't even set up a surgery yet. I don't even have a surgery scheduled yet. But the, the, I found out that, you know, I have this abscess. And he said, what we need to do is place a nephrostomy tube in your, um, in your kidney and also a drain for the abscess to drain all the infection out. Um, because you can't go in uh, to have surgery with infection, obviously. I mean, that's such a high risk. And I'm already at such a high risk because I'm a diabetic. So I was pretty shattered. I was devastated once again, and I just, I thought, really? Can it get any worse? I mean, how does this happen? So he told me that I needed to go to the hospital, uh, which he was gonna take care of. He was said I would either go to the hospital that day or the following Monday and they were gonna have the radiologist put in a nephrostomy tube. Um, it ended up being on a Monday that I went in, May 23rd, to have a nephrostomy tube placed. Now, a nephrostomy tube is a tube, literally, that goes in your back and it enters into the kidney and it drains urine, infection, debris, you know, whatever is possibly in there. and you are awake when they put this tube in your back. There is no, you know, anesthesia or anything. They give you a sedative and that's probably and that's about it. And I mean, the nurse, <laughs> this sounds so funny. The nurse actually let me hold her hand because I was hurting. I mean, I'm already in pain as it is, and then now I'm having this back being drilled or this tube being drilled into my back. So she was very, very sweet. She let me hold her hand and squeeze it. I mean, and it did hurt, I'm not gonna lie. And I ended up having to stay in the hospital for about three days. And uh, a lot of the nurses and doctors there were, was like, you know, when is your surgery scheduled? You know, cause it, I guess my urologist made it sound urgent that I needed to have this done. And I said, that's a very good question. I have no idea when my surgery is. I haven't been scheduled yet. And I did find out that an nephrostomy tube has about an eight-week lifespan, I believe. And um, 
I was really worried because I was like, I do not want to have this in for two months. I mean, there's just no way. And that nephrostomy tube was the biggest pain in my ass. It was horrible. You strap to your leg and then when you empty it, you unstrap it, you take the top off, you drain it into the toilet, and then you wipe it with alcohol swab, put the top back on, and then you're done. Um, it's a huge pain in the ass. The tube is, it's probably the size of like a pencil. Yeah, I would say like probably less, like as thick as a pencil, if not a little bit thicker. And it, it would get clogged a lot because I have infection and debris in my kidney and my kidney's so, I mean, it's messed up. Like, there's just no other word I can use. I mean, it's effed up. Um, so it got clogged a lot. I had to use saline flushes all the time to unclog it. And I, it was just a huge pain. And it, it just, it, it brought me down so bad. Um, I finally did get my surgery date scheduled. My first surgery was going to be on July 14th of 2016. And I was so excited when I finally got the call from my urologist surgery schedule. I was just so happy. I couldn't believe that I was finally gonna have a date put down in the books um, for me you know, to get at least one surgery under my belt. And that's all I wanted. All I wanted was one surgery under my belt because I felt like once one got under there, then the ball would start rolling and, you know, pretty soon I would be done. Uh, while I was waiting to have surgery, my insurance didn't cover the facility I was going to have uh, my surgery at. Um, it was out of my network, but my doctor was in my network. So I had to apply for a thing called gap insurance through the hospital where they would pay any of the costs basically um, that were needed because of the facility being out of network. Um, I had already gone through that previously when I was first scheduled for my for my, for my surgery in November, and I had gotten approved. And then I found out I had to redo another application in order to, for this surgery to go through. So I was pretty upset about that. I thought, you know, once you got approved, that was, you know, basically it, but no, because this was a different sur uh, surgery scheduled, um, same surgery, but a different time scheduled, I had to get approved for it. So I was waiting to hear back if I would get approved or not, even though I was in the books for surgery. Also, uh, what I forgot to mention is while I was in the hospital getting the nephrostomy tube put in, um, like I mentioned before, I'm anemic, I ended up having my first blood transfusion. I found out that I was O positive, which I did not know and I got one unit of blood while I was there. Um, it was pretty, it was kind of scary. I've never received blood before and I never really thought about having to receive it, but I needed it because I was going to have surgery soon. Now we're just waiting to hear from the hospital to make sure I am approved for my gap insurance. So on my next video, you will see if gap insurance is approved and if I finally see that surgery day. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully, you know, like I said, this is helping others. It's, it's definitely helping me to share my story. It's just such a crazy, unique story. I mean, it just, it's one thing after another. And it just seems like, you know, the end is never gonna be there. There's just, it's just gonna keep going on forever. So, make sure you check it out. Um, I have three other videos. This is my fourth video and um, I really hope that you enjoy this. So like I said on my next video, let's see if I get approved for gap insurance and if I make it to my surgery day. Thanks everyone. Have a good day. Bye.